Hello again, chess YouTubers, chess gamers, grandmasters, future grandmasters, it's Fun Master Mike with another edition of Chess Kid YouTube Secrets. Before we move on to this secret, make sure you subscribe and uh, laugh at my jokes. I don't have any way of proving you did the second one, but I'm sure you'll find a way. Today, we're going to talk about defense, and this game is brought to you by... John Nunn. No, he didn't play the game, but he did write a book about this game. And before we had the YouTube, we had the book. And so uh, this one uh, comes to you from one of his books. Now, Black is under some serious threats. In fact, if we give White a couple of free moves, White's just going to move the rover, Rook up and over. And there's going to be some sort of checkmate happening on H7. If you try to push the pawn, of course, White will just take and open up the G file. So, Things look pretty bad, but look at this really calm defense by Black. Rook on F to C8. You might think, well, wait a minute. Why is Black abandoning the king side? How is that going to help? Well, you're about to find out because that's how YouTube works. We learned something. Rook comes up to G3. Now, we all know where this Rook is going, but look at this clever defense by Black. First, Black plays G6, and it looks like Black keeps making his problems worse because the queen is invading, but oh no. We kick the queen out of there, and when she runs away, now comes a very, very clever defense. Now, I'm going to throw in a couple of quick moves here. We had a trade on d4, but now we're getting to the meat and the potatoes, even though Funmaster Mike's vegetarian, so let's just skip right to the potatoes. Black gets his attack going, because if you've watched my video on Chess Kid, you know when kings are castled on opposite sides, you do have to attack the other guy before he gets to you. Now, it looks like white is winning the race. Rook to h3, how do we stop mate? Well, here comes that clever idea. We play the move pawn h5, and yes, yes, it's absolutely true. White can take en passant, which is what he did. If you don't know why that rule is allowed, please go to Chess Kib and watch my video on en passant right now. And then we blockade the pass pawn. Amazingly, the king can be a blockader, and black is totally fine in this position. But we are not out of the woods. The other major thing you can do when you are being attacked, besides, of course, playing some moves that stop your opponent's attack, is to make trades. And here, white plays the move queen f6. Now, we cannot trade queens right away because our pawn is in danger, so black moves back. And know it looks to the untrained eye that black is playing some severe defense and maybe even totally worse. But all black has to do is stop the initial wave and actually black will have better pawn structure and black always has the power of these two pawns coming up the board. And all black has to do is make sure things are safe on the king side and eventually black will get the attack going on the queen side. Okay, we've got one more critical moment I want to show you in this game. In this position, white is really afraid of black playing a move like queen e7 because white will either have to trade queens or back up and black will be totally fine in either scenario. So black plays bishop to g5, a prophylaxis move meant to stop black from playing queen e7 or queen d8. Either one of those moves would lose some amount of material. Now I'm going to show you what black did in this game, which is the correct continuation and how important it was for black to play the move that he did. Black ejected that white queen by playing knight to d7. The queen has to back up and the queen chose to go back to f3. And now, finally, the king's side is incredibly stable. Everything is safe. And black eventually got the better game and won by playing b4 and the knight move and then a5. And here comes those puppies on the queen's side. Not going to show you the rest of the game, but I think you can see black is perfectly fine. The knight can hop into either one of these squares. There's pressure down the c file. And uh, yeah, it was a fun victory for black. But let me show you how critical it was for black to play the move knight d7. Let's just pretend that black delayed for even one move and played a move like a5. After a5, I know black wants to play a4 and trap the bishop, but look at this sparkling idea by white. This is so cool, I had to show it to you. White would have blown things open with the move e5, which actually clears out a rank, not a diagonal or a file. We don't usually clear out a rank in chess, but I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Let's just pretend that black takes. Now white would open up the fourth rank and play rook on d to h4, and even though white's threat is obvious and black could see it, black could be the best chess player in the world, but cannot stop the threat. The queen is just coming to g7. It absolutely does not matter what move black plays. Okay, technically black could give a check, right? And then white would take. But whenever black plays any kind of random move, let's just say black plays knight to d7 now, it's one move too late. It's forced mate in five. We sack our queen, take, take. We open up the h file for that battery. And after king takes, pretty straightforward mate. We check. 
Doesn't matter where the king moves. We check again. The king would have to move back. And then rook on three to h7 mate. Pretty cool stuff. Now let's go back to the position after e5. Even if black gets wise right now and plays the move knight to d7, white can actually still win the game. In fact, queen g7 still wins. It's totally amazing. Take, take, you only have one rook on the h-file, but after king takes, you get the second rook on the h-file, and even though black has some defensive ideas, like pawn f6, thinking that the king is gonna walk his way around to e7 and the bishop's gonna defend, now white wins with rook h8, threatening rook on three to h7, so black would have to play the move knight f8, but then the knight is overworked trying to guard this checkmate and this pawn, so white dives in with bishop takes e6, Threatening rook to g8, mate. Now, if you play bishop here, I just mate you this way. That's pretty cool. I'll also take with the pawn. And if you decide instead to put the queen there, then I take with the pawn. Your only legal move is to take. And then I checkmate you on g8. How pretty is that? In fact, there was even one more pretty line. I cannot believe it. But if we go back to this position, again, if black plays knight to d7 and move too late, white could even play the sparkling knight to e4. Now, black might have some sort of brilliant defense, I don't know, but I do want to show you what happens if takes. We actually take with the bishop, and good luck stopping knight to g5 check, king back, and then pawn h7 mate. Let's give black a move and show that on the board. Check here, and we actually end up mating with a pawn. Even if you take my pawn, even if you play bishop takes, I will still check you, and when your king moves, I will take you, and the dark square domination is complete. Rook to h8 is coming on the next turn. So it was incredibly important when you're defending to trade and to kick that queen out of there. Also, don't forget about this clever idea of using the enemy pawn to blockade his own attack on the h-file. You can see White got to have a lot of fun once he was able to get his h-pawn off the board. I hope you had as much fun watching that as I did presenting it. The art of defense in chess. Wow, somebody should write a book on that. Wait. Wait, they did? Okay, never mind. Chess Kid YouTube video over.